This is giving weird. It's Tuesday. Exam grades typically drop on Wednesdays and I just hit a study break on my study with me and I saw an email saying insights. Your score is available. What's going on? I'm confused. Is it early? Well, let's go check it out. All right, we're gonna do this. Hey y'all, welcome back to Made It to Medicine with Vix. That's me and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Illinois College of Medicine on the Chicago campus. Very big news. Very, very big news. <laughs> study with me live and like right now I'm on a break so this is going to be short before I come back like so I couldn't like verbalize my reaction and just <sighs> going through all of it I got a 70% on my retake exam y'all a 70% remember when I told you that cardio poem is the reason why I failed the first time I got 29% of cardio and respiratory questions correct on the first attempt. You know how much I got like this time? 71. It's called Ate That Up No Crumbs. Yum, 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 yum. Like, ugh. it feels so good. Like, this has been quite the journey. It's been quite the time. It has been quite the setback after setback. And I just didn't know it enough the first time and how I skated by and passed with 29% correct of the heart and the lungs, that would not have been good and that would have set me up for failure in the future. So I'm happy that I mastered those concepts and I'm ready to keep mastering them as I go forward because this is just, it's amazing. God is good. God is amazing. Like, all I had to do was trust him, right? I did that. <sighs> I'm so happy. I mean, get you down. <laughs> ah! Okay. <laughs> like, this just feels so good. And this see my breakdown, y'all. Oh, it was only two um, sections that were lower, like, in the 50s, but everything else was in the 60s and 70s. I think I scored 80% or something. I was just like, what? Who? Who is that girl? That girl is me. I'm her. We are one. Like, it just feels so good and I'm grateful to be here. Grateful to document this journey, grateful to tell y'all the story and I'm gonna get into how I actually prepared for this retake exam and compare it a little bit to how I prepared for the last time that I studied for the MCAT because I know I've had some people asking me, how did I study for the MCAT, how I prepared for that? So we're gonna do a whole compare and contrast and you take away what you will, but whew, one thing I did was that. <laughs> Me. Ah! Okay, let me go finish out this last study while I get my break is definitely over. I'll be back though. Alexa, play Thai Tribbit only one night though. Girl, you ain't even loud enough. Only one night though. Only one night though. Only one night though. So clearly I am very excited about passing this retake exam. Oh my camera's still not even straight. 
All right, I think that's straight. But it's stressful, very stressful. In my school, you get two attempts. The first attempt is whatever. And on that first attempt, there are point totals or point values that you want to get, which can help your overall score for the rotation. So let's see. So I think like the lowest that you can get for an exam, I sent this to one of my friends recently, and of course, okay, here it is. So like typically the lowest scores or points you get for an exam is two points towards your total grade, and the greatest is six. So if you wanna honor the rotation, you wanna aim for at least four points on the exam, which is a 77 to 84. But if you wanna high pass it, you could get three points as long as you high pass the rotation. So for me, when you do a retake exam, you only are eligible or qualified for the lowest amount of points. So I can only get two points, no matter what I score. If I scored 100 on this exam or not, I was only gonna get two points towards my grade. And I did high pass clinically, which is gonna just put me at a pass overall. Y'all, I don't care, okay? Because had I failed, I would be back in this rotation at the end of third year to repeat the entire six weeks of pediatrics. And all praise to the most high. I won't, I won't, I don't have to do that. So I did want to walk you through how I prepared differently for this exam. Number one, I wasn't in clerkship, so I did not have to work and study at the same time. No one, I lied. People do talk about it, right? But on the academic side, like professors, doctors, even residents, I don't know if they forgot what it was like when they were in this position or not, but enough is not said about the fact of how third year medical students are essentially working two full-time jobs. You have to go in and work whatever your schedule is and whether you're running over like, cause if it's clinic, you run over, you can't just leave. And then you have to come home and still study. And as I got to peace, that was my third rotation. I was just so tired. So I would, oh my gosh, that music is so freaking loud. Be so for real, what are y'all doing? Like, come on, speed this up. It's literally always something when I'm recording. I'm gonna come back. We're just gonna wait and let them pass. We'll come back. I seriously forgot what I was <laughs> even saying because why the heck were they so loud? Anyway, when I got to Pete, I am almost certain that I didn't start studying until probably like the mid week two, maybe week three, which was about halfway through the rotation. It exhaustion is real. And I think I was definitely burnt out, but what I did this time, I looked at my score breakdown from when I took the exam back in April. Yeah, I believe it was April. And I knew for a fact that I scored horribly on cardio poems, so I started there. At first, I was trying to do mixed blocks of questions, which is literally a hodgepodge of all of the available pediatric questions. And I was like, girl, why are you doing that? You scored so poorly that you need to see the same topic back to back to back to back. So that's what I did. I'm like, all right, we're about to do all of the cardio questions right now. Yep, we're gonna do them. And then we're going to do our incorrect questions tomorrow because you just need to see it again. And if you got it wrong again, do them the following day. And I did that for every single system. So cardio, palm, renal, repro, endocrine, GI, musculoskeletal, everything. I did them section by section. And then at some point I got on Zoom with a friend and was going through topics with them as well. So they could see like, what am I picking out as the important things? What are the clues that I'm missing? And that they could point them out to me. I also redid all of my MBMEs. One MBME I did like horribly on, like it was so trash and I like my feelings were hurt because I have been doing very, very well on the MBMEs, which is the practice exam. And I was like, all right, what what is the reason? And I was going to just retake the MBME without reviewing it, but I was like, no, we need to get to the bottom of this. And it was, it wound up being like little fine pieces of minutia, like a very small detail that I was missing, which was drastically impacting my score. So I did that. And then I also rewatched Dr. High Yield, his videos on pediatrics. He has a part one and a part two. I think roughly added all up together. It's like an hour and 45 minutes. The point is I just hammered, hammered, hammered in my weaknesses. And I even had met with the program or the clerkship directors, talked to them, um, cause I had some questions about my evaluations cause we literally did not get our peds evaluations until I was almost done with internal medicine. And it's never taken that long <laughs> to get back my clinical evaluation. So I had this meeting scheduled with them. And once I scheduled it, I also let them know, okay, I didn't pass the exam and I missed it by two points. And I heard that starting the rotation 
after me, you all started giving the students an assessment halfway through the rotation to see how they're doing, where they're at, if they need more assistance or support because apparently a lot of people failed the PEDS exam last year and I was in that number, I was one of them. But before I could even ask like, oh, can I also have access to this exam? One of the clerkship directors was like, oh, do you wanna take the exam and I can send it to you. Let me know if you have, if the link comes through, if it works. And then if you're free on Monday, I can hop on Zoom with you and we can review the entire exam together talk about support like literally someone or you know people say they'll support you and it ends right there in the phrase but for the director to say that and then create space and time for me and ask like are you sure you're free I was like look I'm not currently in clerkship I'm solely studying for Pete so yes whatever day and time works for you next week let's do it and even when I was going through the questions with the clerkship director and it was some things I was getting wrong they were like yeah when I did this I got this wrong too or I thought about this and I didn't make this connection but look when you're looking at this question these are the highlights of it this is the important part or like I can see why you thought that but it's really more of this and I took that as the director not trying to make me feel bad like it's very easy to for me to beat myself up especially like I mean, I already failed the exam. It's like, all right, you bet not fail it again. And I even said that on the call with them, like, yeah, you know, I'm just really nervous about passing. Cause you know, if I fail it, I have to repeat the clerkship. And they kind of ignored that complete statement. We're like, you're gonna do fine. But in the event that you have any further questions, after we get off of this Zoom call, send me an email, send me a text, whatever it is that you need, I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. If you need to hop on Zoom again, I will hop on Zoom. Like, I want you to pass this exam. I know that you can pass this exam. And I know that you did really well on the rotation. Your evaluation said so. So, like, we just need to fill whatever gaps that you have. So, like, it literally felt so, so good to not only, like, not have to repeat the rotation, but to have passed the exam comfortably. And that's the highest that I've scored on a clerkship exam to date. Technically, I should have scored higher on my family essay and my ob rotation, but I changed answer on both of those because I didn't trust myself. But you know, we are working on building that trust muscle. So I'm gonna just keep reciting those four rules that I did, um, that I said in my other video. Number one, read the question carefully. Number two, diagnose as you go. Number three, if you don't know it, flag it and keep it moving. Number four, do not go back reading through every single question if it wasn't flagged or left incorrect. Even on practice questions. These are rules, I'm building the muscle. Just like you go to the gym, you working out, you gotta build those muscles, build that strength up. So I'm building my mental strength because we're gonna get fixed. We're gonna trust ourselves. So yes, I also want to compare this to how I study for the MCAT. If you didn't know, I took the MCAT five times. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. Not something that I'm proud of, but it is my study. It's part of my journey and it is what it is. And I'm still where <laughs> I'm supposed to be, so it doesn't really matter. But I did it five times so that you don't have to. Some things that I improved upon the fifth time that I took it during 2020, when we thought the world was ending, when we were having press conferences every day to talk about the state of the world and yeah, I didn't get to see people for months outside out of going to the grocery store with a cloth mask on my face and trying to get in and out as fast as possible. Very different times, very fragile mental state, but I made it through that time. So if you're studying for the MCAT, you too will make it through. Please don't try to do it by yourself. It's already so hard, it's already so isolating. Get in therapy, talk about your problems, and then work towards your goals. So back on the academic side, some things I did differently for the MCAT that fifth time, I got a private tutor. Um, there are a lot of people in medical school who perform really, really well on the MCAT and they still tutor. There are some things when studying for some of my exams, I'm like, wow, this really is giving MCAT material, which is weird because I thought that I'd never see this again. And I mean like some things like, you know, amino acids and some biochem definitely comes back. Um, And so once I got this tutor, she recommended Mal Down. It's an Anki deck. I'll look to see if I can find it because I'm sure I don't still have it on my computer. But if I do, I'll link it in the description of this video. I did the Anki for that. Psych Soch is all memorization. You just got to know the definitions. You know those definitions, you will perform well. Start doing the Psych Soch definitions before you even start studying. Like literally do the Anki, do the Quizlet, whatever, do it because that's something, again, it's like a muscle that you have to work on because it's memory, right? And the longer that you're working to build that long-term memory, the easier the information will come back to you and that it easier, it'll be for you to recall it once you get to assessments for practice and the real MCAT exam. And then the graphs, you need to learn how to read graphs. So I was in journal club previously and we went over how to understand graphs. I don't know, maybe 
this is simple and you do get it, I'm not sure, but I struggle with that a lot. So like understanding the graphs, cause those will be in all of the sections minus cars. For cars, my car score didn't really move. So I'm not gonna lie and try to give you advice on that because I don't really have any. For chemistry, um, like chem phys and bio biochem. Biochem is literally like pathways. I would write down the paths all of the time until I could recite them. And from what I remember, it is, it's kind of similar to medical school and knowing like the rate limiting pathways. So for like glycolysis, you would need to know the three important enzymes, which are hexokinase, um, phosphofructokinase, and pyruvate kinase, knowing which one is the rate limiting enzyme, which is the enzyme that moves the slowest. Cause so that limits, you know, the production or the speed of the pathway. And then knowing the reverse pathway, gluconeogenesis. So like, I would just write those down, knowing what's the fast state, what's the star state. A lot of compare and contrast can help for me because I'm a list girl at times and a tables girl at times. And really my tutor had me looking up videos. If it was something I kept getting wrong, just look it up. Even now with studying, I was talking to a friend about this the other day, a bad habit of students is creating this list of all the things that you need to go over in the moment. Like I just went over a question and let's say I got, I don't know, endocytosis is wrong. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna add that to my list. I'm gonna look that up later. No, just look it up now. Save yourself the time because once that list gets so long, you're never going to look it up. Then you're going to keep getting the same questions wrong over and over again. All in all, be honest with yourself about what your progress is. Don't just say like, oh, I'm really good at that. So I don't really have to work on it. You scored lower than a 60%. Like you're not really that great at it and it's okay. We do things to practice is to get better and less content review, more practice questions. I know it's very tempting to want to sit and go through cover to cover of a test prep book, Princeton, Kaplan, Exam Crackers, you name it, doesn't matter, I probably looked at it. But reading that is very passive. And in order to learn and retain the material, if you're struggling, because if you got something now, if reading works for you, don't listen to me, listen to what works best for you and you know that, but also don't be in denial. So practice questions. Like literally, as I told you, I went from a 29% on cardio palm, the heart and the lungs, to a 71%. And it's the same topic but I hammered it down. I didn't just keep watching Dr. High Yield. I didn't go back through a book that I have, my case files book and just read everything. No, I was like, we're gonna do these questions over and over and over again. Because once you do the questions and do them as topic specific, for me, for a medical school and like, you know, step one, step two, we have the breakdown as topic specific. I'm not sure if the UWorld for MCAT does that, but if it does, if it says, okay, um, do all of the metabolism questions, or if it breaks it down and says, okay, we can do all of the transcription, all of the translation, and that's something that you're struggling on, do like 10, 15 questions in a row. Cause then you'll start picking up on the patterns. You'll start seeing, oh, these are the clues. These are the things that they really see that's important versus just reading about transcription, translation over and over again and never getting it. And the biggest advice that I could give, use the AAMC resources. Their explanations suck, they're trash, but they are the test writers. So the quicker you can understand how they are writing the exam, the better you will be. Your, your thing that you should be doing is get into the mind of the test writer. You are so capable and you can do it. You got it. Look, if I made it through that piece retake exam and after I posted about it so many people slid in my DMs talking about they failed that exam too and they retook it and they passed so I know you're gonna also pass or I have yet to retake it and you know if you can offer any advice let me know and I was like well I can offer it only after I get my score back because I ain't trying to lead you astray if I took it again and I didn't do well but I did and the point is to learn from past mistakes I took the MCAT five times because I was in denial I was like oh if I just study harder if I just study longer if I just not study smarter because it wasn't smart to sit five times I was not ready to sit until the fourth time so I learned from my mistakes whether that's in medical school whether that was as a pre-med student or <laughs> whether it's the mistakes I'm going to make in the future as a resident physician whatever it be you can do this I don't think I'm any better than anyone else if I can do it you can do it too you are so capable and I will see y'all next week bye we passed the exam we passed the exam what, what we passed we passed we passed the exam. Bye bye, Pete. Bye bye, forever. <laughs>